Good morning and welcome to First United Methodist Church as we gather for this service of worship. It's good to see you all uh, as we join together as God's people uh, in praise of God. Uh, we also invite uh, and, and welcome those who have are listening via Facebook and radio and TV. Uh, you're part of the family this morning as well uh, as we celebrate this very special day in the life of our church, All Saints Sunday. Uh, and later on, we'll be remembering those of our congregation uh, who have professed faith and now have gone on to be with the Lord uh, in a special uh, service. Uh, there are a few announcements uh, that I want to share with y'all. Uh, Sarah Baker, first of all, says, thank you, thank you, thank you. You might have seen that uh, listed on the inside for all those who volunteered at the pumpkin patch. Never before in the history of the pumpkin patch, in about 20 years, have we sold out almost a week early. Uh, but we were just one of the, not only one of the, the only game in town, but one of the few games in, in East Texas uh, to have pumpkins. And uh, so it was kind of sad for those who were still coming later in the week looking for pumpkins to say, we don't have any. But we said, wait till next year. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll have more pumpkins next year and, and it'll be a, 2020 looks to be better in so many different ways uh, that we can, we just pray for. Also, I think Becky and Lynn wanted to share something. Is that true, Becky? Okay, well, then I'm gonna speak for Becky here. Uh, and Shannon, uh, and Barbie, and Tammy. Uh, Christmas blessings, the Christmas blessing tree is up in the uh, foyer, and we'll be adding names to that soon. Uh, is that, oh, they're already up? Oh, well, I, I actually walked this way. Uh, so uh, anyway, Christmas blessings. So now's the time to start taking uh, tags off the tree. And there are trees uh, throughout uh, the city. Uh, and this helps with families who have uh, kids with, with wish lists. And I mentioned this last week, but just for clarification, on the ornaments, there's a kid's number at the top. And then at the bottom, it shows who the siblings are. So if you're in a group that's trying to do a family group, that's how you look for your family. They should be right together. Okay, so that's a, that's a new improved thing this year. Siblings are all together if you want to get a whole set. Uh, and then Lynn Grant, uh, her uh, fourth and fifth grade class uh, is sponsoring the uh, Operation Christmas Child Shoebox Ministry. Shoeboxes are put together out there. That is the box. Inside is an inventory of things you can put in there. Bring it back by November 15th. That is the day because then we got to join them with all the other boxes collected throughout Carthage. We'll go over to Northside where they'll get uh, sent off as one big shipment. So that's another way uh, to celebrate uh, in the season. And then we also have a video this morning. Is that right? Uh, well, let's play that video.
Lord at all times, God's praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its bonus to the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt God's name together. I sought the Lord who answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Uh, uh, 
grandson had a new baby girl named Raylynn Josie. Uh, yeah, Raylynn. Uh, she was born early. She's about two pounds, uh, 13 ounces, 14 inches long. So I want to pray for them as she uh, is welcomed into the world. And now let's go, Lord, in prayer for silently, privately, and I'll lead us together. Lord, we gather as your people this morning, coming together in one voice because we have one faith in you, our one Lord. Lord, even as we have elections coming up in this country, we are reminded of the hymn, elect one from every nation, and that is you. That we are your people no matter where we live, no matter what we do, no matter who serves in government, we are your people. And so we come together to worship you and to be your body in Christ, empowered by your Holy Spirit. Help us to live this day uh, in love for each other and in love particularly for you. As we remember both those who've gone on before us and those who are yet to join uh, in this body. For Lord, we know that your body is growing throughout the world. As your gospel message is heard, people day in and day out say yes to you and join this body. We ask, Lord, that therefore you would help us to proclaim continually with the angels in heaven and all the saints who've gone on before us. Holy, holy, holy is your name. And Lord, where we have failed to serve you and, and where sin still keeps creeping up, we ask an extra dose of your spirit, just as Elisha did, that we might turn from those sins, that our lives might be fully, completely abiding in you. We ask your blessing for the concerns upon our hearts, thinking first of all for our nation, uh, as we do have these elections, that, Lord, you would guide us, that you would ultimately guide us at the polls, that you would guide our leaders in government, city, state, national level, that we might do the things that bring honor and glory to you. Help us to live also as a people uh, who can abide differences, who can talk with one another even when we don't always agree on the same things. Help us to be your light out in the world. We ask your blessing for these concerns we've lifted up. We pray particularly for the families of Don Bates and Jeff Jacks and Renee McFadden as they mourn the losses of their loved ones. We ask your continued blessing for Bobby Anderson and Cecil Portman, for Grace Knight, for Don Lipsy, for Keith Clark, Debs English, Chris McLeese, as they all continue to recover uh, from recent surgeries or procedures. Lord, continue to move in them that they might find full victory in you. We ask your blessing for Scott Lee as he awaits a, a procedure to bring him relief from pain. And ask your continued blessing for Patricia Vasquez and Mike Ambrose, for Colton Buchanan, for Bob and Martha Harness, for Sue Cole, Robert Peacock, Adam Jones, for Tommy McKnight. We give you thanks for those who've come home. We give you thanks uh, for those who are still recovering and ask your blessing particularly for Robert Peacock and Sue Cole as family and friends gather around them in these final days. Lord, let them uh, feel your presence and be reminded of the hope we all have in you. Be with Jack and Josie Morris as they welcome their new baby girl, Raylynn Marie, into the world. That, Lord, uh, she would continue to grow and be able to come home soon. 
We ask all this in the name of Jesus and by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, 
Thanks be to God. Why don't you please be seated? Let us pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts, be acceptable in your sight. For Lord, you are our rock, and you are our redeemer. Amen. A few years back, I'm not sure if it's changed, just Facebook had a limit, a maximum number of friends that you could have on Facebook. How many of you know how many friends you have on Facebook? Yeah, because we, we, we don't ever keep count of it because we just add them as we make new friends or, or as we find old friends who want to reconnect. Uh, but there's been a study uh, by an evolutionary anthropologist who said really the maximum number of people that we could hope to have a relationship with, a, a true relationship, is 150. I would dare say anyone in here who has a Facebook page has more than 150 people uh, who are, are friends on Facebook. Uh, there was a, an inventor, uh, the inventor of Gore-Tex, about 60 years ago, he, he invented that, uh, that very, what used to be a very expensive fabric uh, that would allow moisture out, it would keep moisture from coming in, and so it would make high-tech uh, clothes. He found, just from his own experience of inventing factories, or, or creating factories, is that when a factory got to about 200 folks, there were too many people working a factory. That they would lose uh, the familial race relationship, that they would learn, lose the ability to know each other's gifts and who could do what. And so he, when he would create new factories, he would limit it to 150. Because he thought that's where people could actually know each other's names and, and know who to call on if there was a problem in the in the company. He wanted to make sure that his products, which were technical products, uh, would always uh, serve in the worst of conditions. This idea of, of having lots of friends or, or of limiting our relationships simply because we can't possibly comprehend or maintain all of them really speaks to our own truth as the children of God. I mean, it, it begs the question, if we're limited in our relationships and how much we can know, and Jesus has gone to the cross for us that we might have new life for the entire world, how many people can God really know? You ever thought about that? It's like asking uh, how many angels can dance on the head of a pen. You, you start thinking about it, and it gets beyond our understanding of God. And, and here in 1 John, just as in 1 Corinthians 13, we are introduced into the mysterious, the mystery of God himself. A mystery that goes beyond what we think we know into more of what God, if God knows our hearts, if God knows the number of hairs upon our heads, if God knows the number of years of our lives, if God loves us even despite our own sins, and even in fact sometimes when we have a hard time loving ourselves, that speaks of the depth of God's love, doesn't it? A corollary to that is not only does God love us, but he loves others. Even other people that we don't like or that we have a hard time loving. God sees even deeper than that. We don't know, but as we read in, in chapter 3, uh, scholars are, are of just mixed opinions about what verse 6 says. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. We know sin separates us from God. John Wesley put it this way. He says that you know, we're, we're constantly growing in our relationship with God. 
Uh, and all those who put their faith in Jesus as Lord and Savior have confessed their sins, have been justified before God. But the rest of our lives, empowered by the Holy Spirit, is this sanctifying process that takes us on to perfection. And what John Wesley sees here is when we're abiding in God, that is when we got our, our eye on the prize, to, to borrow a, a phrase from the Apostle Paul, when, when we're constantly continuing to run that race full bore towards God, it's very possible that we don't sin. It's when we take our eyes off God and we give in to a temptation or we give in to an old habit or, or we just stumble. We find ourselves sinning again. And so John Wesley says, yeah, when, when we're constantly focusing, you know, we, we can avoid those intentional sins upon God. It's just the challenge is, is that we fall. We all know that. The Apostle Paul said it this way, I do not do the things I know I should do. In fact, I do the very things I know I shouldn't do. And if I do not do what I do, then woe is me. But he also says, even though my sin abounds, grace abounds more. God's grace, which enables to work in us beyond. And so then he asks the question in chapter 6 of Romans. He says, well, if... If when I sin, grace, God's grace abounds more, maybe I should keep sinning. But the Apostle Paul says no. He says yes, grace is good, but, but being with God is better because I then get to just kind of relax in that grace that's there. But I, I don't want to sin anymore. John Wesley called this that sanctification process of becoming more holy. Because of what God is doing in us, the Holy Spirit moving in us, helping us to do the right things and helping us to avoid doing the wrong things. When Jesus himself uh, was tested, he was led by the Holy Spirit out into the desert where he was tempted for 40 days and 40 nights, not by the Spirit, but by the devil. He was tested by God. But he was tempted by the devil. The difference being is the testing helped to develop character and fortitude and mission. The tempting was what the devil was trying to do to stop that mission, to stop that fortitude, to, to stop what he had planned to do all along. God works in us and, and wants the best for us, but sometimes we fall, fall short. And so the writer of 1 John says, Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Everyone who commits sin is a child of the devil. And so you know, the sin is still the works of, of the old self, but we are living into the new self. And he says, Beloved, we are God's children now. That's good news right there, right? Good news, to be God's children. You're not just God's subjects living in God's kingdom. You are God's children, having been adopted, brought in by love into God's family. But these words that we hear so familiar at every funeral or memorial service, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him. We will be like Christ. But we are in this sanctification process throughout the rest of our lives. From the time that we profess faith throughout the rest of our lives, as we live in God, as we abide in God, ideally, we are growing and we are maturing in faith. Our challenge is this, brothers and sisters, friends and neighbors, our challenge is this. Is sometimes we think if we just profess faith on this day, hey, I've checked the box, I've given my life to Christ, and then we go back to sinning again. Who wants to continue to sin again and again and again? As if we're nailing Christ back to the cross again and again because of the sins we're doing. We die to the old self, Paul says, and we live to the new self. It's just, it's a, it's a, process that continues on the rest of our lives, sanctifying. 
As we seek more and more the things of God, we seek less and less the things of this world. As we seek more and more to love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength and love our neighbor as ourselves, we seek to hate or dislike or say bad things about others. But it's a challenge because we're still in the flesh even as the Spirit is moving within us. Paul says, woe is me if I have to overcome sin myself. But thanks be to God because we have this grace in Christ Jesus. Right now we're children of God, dwelling with God. We are the people of God. We are the people of God who have been named as children of God, which now makes us a family, brothers and sisters in Christ. And we come together to worship. We come together to serve. We come together to care for one another. And then we come together to then go back out into the world to share the light. But today, we come together on a special time, in a special way. We have Holy Communion, uh, a sacrament in which we partake to remember both what Christ has done for us and what Christ is doing with us because we meet Christ in the midst of the breaking of the bread and the drinking of the cup. But today, a year from uh, All Saints Day last year, we are breaking bread and drinking the cup with some folks who are no longer with us in the flesh. Folks who have gone on to be with God. What we still know as being children of God, they now know more fully, even as they are more fully known, to quote Paul. And so today we, we take this sacrament of Holy Communion, remembering that Christ died for us, that we don't just live for another day, that we don't just have uh, more life like Lazarus did for a while but then die, but that we have eternal life in Christ because we put our faith in what Jesus has done for us and because we put our faith in what Jesus has done for us as we take the sacrament we are reminded again of his sacrifice for us of his precious love for us that we can then go out and live as God's people children today who are becoming what we shall be in the future. The Apostle Paul says, you know, now we look as if through a glass darkly, but then we shall see face to face. And we shall know Christ even as we are fully known. It's, it, it recounts the mystery of what's going on in our lives as the Spirit moves in us. But as we take this sacrament today, we're doing it remembering those who've gone on to be with Christ, the communion of the saints. All those who are living in Christ in heaven and all those who are living in Christ here on earth, we transcend time and space because we're together. We're together. All those who say holy, holy, holy to the Father Almighty, the one who has given us life and new life and love. How many people can God love? The scriptures suggest it is unfathomable. It is unknowable. But it's just enough. It's just enough. However many people are out there who turn to God, his grace is available. And his grace is available for each of them, for all of us. And his grace is available for each of us as we live our lives as we, as we grow and, and as we try to mature and as we, we seek sanctification, that is the spirit moving in us where we sin less and less and live for God more and more, there's enough grace for you in all that you are and all that you will be. In all that you confess and in all that you're sorry for, there is enough grace. Because God's love provides for it. We gather today. We gather each Sunday. Because we come to honor and to praise 
to worship and to love the one who first loved us. And we gather today in that love, remembering that he takes that which is most dearest to us, our loved ones and our own lives, and he makes them whole. He cuts out the dross and sanctifies each of us. We become saints not because of our own doing, but because of what Christ does in us. We're still sinners. We still find those times where we're not abiding in Christ, where, where we fall short of the glory of God. But God has sent his spirit that we might continue to overcome that sin and to live more and more for God and with each other for Christ's victory out in the world. Today, as we celebrate this uh, sacrament of Holy Communion, I want you to think about this love and this grace that has become, has been made available to you, has been given to each of us. A grace that works today, a grace that worked that first day that we first said yes to Jesus, the grace that was working for us before we even knew it, and the grace that continues to work in you today as we grow in love and charity for our neighbor. Would you please join me on page 12 of your hymnal or up on the big screen as we celebrate the sacrament together. <clears throat> Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people here on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you've given birth to your church. You've delivered us from a slavery to sin and death. And you've made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took the bread. He gave thanks to you, Father. And then he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples. He said, take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, Father. And then he offered it to all of them, saying, drink to this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this as often as you do it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim today the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here 
and upon these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body of blood of Christ that we might leave to the world. The body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly table. For all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forevermore. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You should find uh, in front of you uh, uh, a little uh, containers that have both the bread and the juice. You don't have to be a member here to take it. Uh, you can, all, you, everyone's free to take it uh, because it's the love of Christ for you. Won't you please join in the Holy Communion now? And as you probably noted in your uh, bulletin, our offering today will be going to Christmas blessings to take care of uh, those families uh, who are trying to provide Christmas gifts for their kids. And now will those who are helping with the All Saints uh, celebration uh, head towards the back. All Saints Day is the day of the first Sunday in November each year in which we remember those from the previous year who have passed away. It's not that these were perfect people, but these were faithful people, people who have professed their faith in Christ and had lived a life and have finished the race and have gone to be with God. And because of the Holy Spirit and what God does, they are now in communion with him. And so today we remember them, we grieve their loss, but we also celebrate their victory, that their race here on earth is done. But this is also a day where we also remember all those uh, that we have lost. Those from previous years or those who maybe weren't members here in this congregation, but uh, who were near and dear to us anyway. And so today I'm going to light the first candle uh, to remember all that we have lost. Family, friends, Loved ones of all ages and all years. Would you please stand as we read the names of those saints who have gone on to their eternal reward. Kathleen Robinette.
Jean Jernigan. Cliff Townsend. Bob Patterson. Bev Brown. Penny Criddle. Dixie Whitaker.
Georgia Underwood. Charles Chan Esco. Dolores Blackwell. Heavenly Father, you have brought together your elect in one communion and fellowship that overcomes space and time itself. For we know that when people are present or separated from us today, we know they are with you and we give you thanks. Help us to understand over coming days and weeks, months and years, the mystery of being all together one in Jesus Christ, who's overcome death itself. Help us all to acknowledge and to join with the heavenly course, the communion of saints that has always been, that sings to you and praises you. Grant us grace today and always to follow your holy saints in how we live and in how we love in all manners of godliness that we might come to understand those unspeakable joys that great mystery that only now we see a glimpse of help us to trust in you always those dearest to us as well as our very lives that we might always be ready to enter into your throne room and to be with you beginning today. We ask all this in the name of Jesus and by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be, or may, please continue standing as we sing. Don't sit yet. <coughs>
second verse. When I do that kind of stuff, I always tell people I'm ministering to those who don't want things to be perfect. <laughs> I'm the perfect minister for those people. Second verse. Yes.